Okay. Today we're going to go over the uh, setup, battery placement, servos, that kind of thing, uh, and hatch location, that sort of thing, on the, uh, the Horton and uh, on the uh, Pokta, Pokta, whatever you want to call it, as well as the uh, B2 model. Uh, Alpar 6 of the RC Powers Forum specifically asked how, how these things are set up, where is the battery placed, that kind of thing. So, the, uh, on the, we'll start with the Horton. The Horton, again, it, it, they're all very similar to each other. It's just a two servo setup. I gave you the uh, shape of the Elevon on the pattern, and I just uh, I came in an inch with just marked an inch from the edge of the Elevon in, inward and uh, centered up a. Um, uh, I like to use these nylon uh, real planes uh, horns. They clamp the foam. Screws go through to another little nylon uh, square there that uh, clamps the foam, and I can also it allows me sometimes I need to reinforce that uh, for, because of a bending or a long elevon or whatever I can put a piece of number three or number two uh, car carbon rod under that and stiffen them up. Anyway, uh, that's kind of use on the elevon. Then the uh, I put the uh, uh, what do you call it? servo basically uh, just ahead of the center of gravity. Basically, this when I cut the hatch in here, which is roughly two and three quarter inches forward of the end of the fuse, anyway, two and three quarter inches forward of that, or roughly 11 and a half inches back. That's your, basically where your, um, line these up here, you'll see, that's pretty much your, um, your center of gravity for the plane. Right now I've got a battery in it, so it's going slightly nose down. Um, now, what I do on these, it's difficult to get, to thread a thread, the wire through the nacelle and into the a little fuse area here. So what I do is I uh, poke a hole through the foam and bring the servo wire across and directly into the fuse area itself. And then, uh, as you can see, I just bring it up uh, inside there, and then that's these are the two wires to the servo. I notch. Uh, Dave Trivi taught me to do this. Notch the um, fuse pan. And let the, uh, uh, let the speed controller uh, sort of half recess into the fuse, and, and the, basically the uh, heat sinks to stick out in the airstream so that it keeps it cool. And then all your wires for that just come right up inside the there. And of course, that's kind of dictated. I just don't pull them tight, but I just bring them around from the motor, from the motor mount here, and tape them down here, and then tape the front of it down here so that the uh, forward wires can't come out. And they just come through into the inside right here. I mount a, uh, a piece of, uh, uh, what do you call it? I have it in a couple of places there so I can adjust the uh, battery or adjust the location of the battery as I need to. But it's basically, the battery is sitting under the canopy here. And you can I can reach it just fine, just reaching in here. But however you want to do it. You may say, you know, I don't like that. I want to, I want to cut this out and make that the hatch. However you want to do it. Put yourself out. This Velcro here is what holds my edge. Uh, receiver and the uh, mixer, the detail mixer that's connected to it. And I use a detail mixer to mix the con control uh, information. And I put a magnet, a field magnet here and here. And I also added a little, um, I was adding a little uh, Velcro, but not even stuck to itself. So I'll have to fix that. Anyway, help hold this down because as this plane flies, it wants to flex a bit and just enough so that it will pop this hatch. Time to time, especially in a, in a high wind and a low, heavy load, that way it'll want to do that. Um, let's see what else can I tell you about that? I think that's about it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, easy plane to fly, really. Once you get it, once you get it up to air trimmed out, it's uh, it almost flies itself. The B2 
on it is essentially the same thing. I've got the uh, these marks here again are the, are the center of gravity. Now what I've done here, I've cut a slot centered so that I can insert a camera if I want to look either direction. But it's the same basic setup. Now this one has three servos, so I've taken the, the servo wires that are connected to the uh, ailerons and taped them to the back side here. So take take them to the inside of the fuse so that I can find them easily. And this other one then is the servo for the rudder, or not rudder, I mean the ele elevator, which is right here. Um, you fix that one, speaking of rudders. Um, and that just goes right, under, it goes right, I just went ahead and threaded that one across. These are the same thing I did on the uh, Horton. I just punched a hole through, brought them, brought them over, and brought them into the leaves. So that's that. And uh, same kind of thing here. I notched, notched the uh, the, the uh, uh, ventral pan so I can semi-recess that uh, heat sink. That all comes up inside right here. I put the Velcro back up here in the nose, as you can see, and uh, that holds the battery in place pretty much. And uh, you can get the back side of the motor back there to, to uh, make sure that's got enough. Uh, Glue, whatever your choice in glues are to hold that together. And there it is. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Uh, sixth generation Recruit Pakpa, I'm starting to call this one. If, uh, I consider this to be the fifth generation Recruit. This was the Alexander Beltsev uh, that was designed for the Pakpa program, as you call. And I would, and the tailless version here would be the sixth generation. As you can see, they have a wing wing canard configuration, very similar, but the, that rear tail area, vertical, or cut off, and uh, uh, just flies with the minor vertical, uh, ventral vertical stabilizers. But anyway, fifth and sixth generations. Um, so, it's just a lot like the Hornet. We've got just two servos here that are controlling the elevons on the trailing edge of the wing. I've cut a hatch in here, and this one I brought a bit more farther forward because the battery again is up under this portion. It's uh, it, basically the end of the battery is about flush with the top end of that opening, and I put that about seven inches forward from the end of the. And, Unless, of course, you take and cover the motor. The way the pattern is, it stops right there. You can make it longer if you want to want to cover the motor. I didn't. Didn't do it in this one. I did do it on the pattern. But anyway, that is uh, that is not your, your your center of gravity. Is basically right where I did this is uh, right through where these pumps are here. The top of the apex of the pump is basically your same as your your center. There's no battery in this, so it won't be tail heavy right now. Uh, anyway, so that's it. I did the same sort of thing. Uh, well, actually, I did on this one. I, did, I was able to thread it across, but you could do that. You could just punch it, go across. It's a very short distance, and you really you are able to get your hand back in these uh, nacelles, so you can can do that. The 48 inch ones, same way, but the same way. It's just, this is just a 37 inch version, so it's you know, smaller. Anyway, so that's. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's how I, uh, I set them up. I don't I don't get too complicated with it. Keep it pretty simple. I like simple. Simple works for me. Um, and thanks for watching. And that's a wrap.